The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Building Your Tribe with Community Cloud. I'm Andrea Terrell, Marketing Director at Configuro, um, and today we're going to be talking about how Community Cloud can be used to engage customers, partners, and employees alike. Um, Jody, if you could advance to the next slide. A um, couple of housekeeping things before we jump into the meat and potatoes of the content. We will be doing Q&A at the end, so if you do have any questions as we go through this content, please type them in the chat window of GoToMeeting. We are on Twitter and we'll be sharing some insights from today's event with the handle at Configuro. Um, so please give us a shout if you are a Twitter user. Um, one of the first questions that we always get is if we will share the slides and recording. And yes, we will be sending those out via email um, shortly after today's presentation. So keep an eye out for those. Without further ado, I want to introduce today's speaker. Um, Jody Hamlet is our managing partner and founder at Configuro. Um, he started this business in 2009, and since then, our firm has managed over 800 projects across all Salesforce clouds and products. Um, so Jody, I'll hand it over to you to, to take it from here. Awesome, thanks, Andrea. So welcome all, thank you for joining. And I want to start off very quickly with an overview of Salesforce for those who don't know what uh, Salesforce is and what type of company they are, uh, as well as Configuro. So Salesforce uh, has, has been uh, a huge technology innovator in, in our space. Um, they have definitely uh, contributed to uh, a lot of technology. And today what we're going to be talking about is the Salesforce platform and uh, one of their products called Community Cloud. And as an overview, Configuro, we're one of the top partners uh, in Salesforce that implements uh, Force.com. So we were ranked uh, in the top uh, right quadrant by a company called Clutch.co, who actually researches independent firms and uh, who implements Salesforce services and more. Uh, and we're one of the top partners out there today who does a lot of Force.com uh, projects as well as uh, communities. Uh, as Andrea mentioned, uh, we've implemented over 800 plus projects to date. We also have products on the App Exchange, so we're an ISV partner as well. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the App Exchange later and how that integrates with the community. Um, but we've implemented over uh, 100 plus projects uh, implementing communities and uh, again, rated pretty high on the Force.com <coughs> implementation. And without further ado, uh, let's talk about becoming a customer company, which is important. Uh, many companies uh, pivot to their competitors uh, or pivot to, um, you know, internal to basically increase revenue and things. But many customers should be pivoting to their customers um, to make sure that they become a customer company uh, in the sense that uh, looking for ways to push information, products, and also make the customer experience working with them uh, a better experience and enhanced experience. And with that, we're going to talk about the community cloud. And today we're going to talk about, you know, the three different community clouds, your customers, your partners, and your employees, and what that, how that supports, um, you know, more business, how that also uh, supports a better customer experience. And you know, today communities power our lives, right? Um, I, I know there's uh, many people who have Netflix accounts. Uh, many people use Uber. Uh, folks are are very uh, well versed on LinkedIn and our you know professional landscape. But ultimately, um, what we need to do from a customer perspective and to become a customer company is really uh, communicate with those customers on those devices and also where they actually uh, are. So you know, from a communication perspective, pushing information to them and also giving them access through a mobile device is very important. Um, <clears throat> and where does that start? It starts in the ecosystem. So you start with your customers, uh, you look at, at different businesses that work with brokers, retailers and resellers. Um, you also connecting with your employees and then you know connecting with agencies, vendors and suppliers 
it's all about engaging these folks um, out in the ecosystem and being a better customer company. And we're finding that using the community cloud, there's much faster resolution as customers are accessing a community, being able to resolve their issues on their own, being able to find knowledge documents. We're finding about a 48% growth rate in, in with those customers who are using that technology. From a partner reselling perspective, uh, increased sales of over 43% for those customers who've implemented the partner community. And then from an employee perspective, uh, really increasing the ability for folks to find experts, to people to uh, collaborate more, uh, to find files and documents and keep things centralized. Um, we're finding in a decrease in the ability for folks to find experts out there with the employee community. And the reason being is because today's technology, it really falls short. So you have your websites, which are, are branded and, and pretty open uh, for folks to go out there and, and, and click on and see your product, see your information and to reach out, but they're not really interactive. Uh, portals, which you know really provide uh, a lot of business data uh, uh, out there and really are not mobilized or personalized. And then you have your social communities like the Facebooks, uh, like the Twitters, um, <clears throat> like the LinkedIn, um, but they're not connected to your business processes. So ultimately, how can you or how can you guys connect to customers, partners, and employees to drive true business results? And the answer is the community cloud. And the reason why this community cloud is such a phenomenal product is because it is connected to the Salesforce One platform, uh, and that platform offers a lot of rich uh, workflow integrations, uh, out of the box capabilities that can be set up pretty quickly. Uh, it does allow us to connect smarter and faster uh, with our customers, partners, and employees. And what is this Salesforce One platform? Well, it's made up of a few things. So initially, you have an open ecosystem where early on Salesforce allowed developers to actually uh, develop on the Salesforce platform uh, using their technology to build their own products, uh, which is now today uh, the App Exchange, which has over 2,500 products out there that customers can download into their own Salesforce orgs and use them. And then behind that uh, is a huge data structure that allows you to have a relational database and multiple databases. You also have the ability out of the box to have a mobile UI. Uh, you have Chatter, which is that collaboration, allows you to connect with uh, folks that are accessing the system and outside the system. Uh, you also have those rich analytics workflows, that we, as we mentioned, and also from a security perspective, the roles, profiles, and also identity, being able to synchronize up and make sure people are only seeing the data they need to see. Um, apps are developed much faster on this type of platform. It is a multi-tenant platform, so as uh, Salesforce uh, generates and creates new technology and implements it in their product, which they have three releases a year. That capability is pushed out to all of their clients, not just the very large Fortune 100 clients, but every single client, including the mom and pop shop with five users. Again, this platform uh, has innovated the enterprise and has been able to allow people to scale. So the community cloud sits on top of this rich platform, which enables us to out of the box provide many capabilities. And we'll get into some of those right now. So from a business perspective, you could drive results through the community in a number of different ways. So integrating your workflows, integrating uh, third party applications through their uh, APIs, uh, also being able to look at files within context. So uh, being able to make SharePoint and, and Google Google files available, um, being able to also synchronize files across multiple devices, uh, and also giving the business the ability to take action uh, on information that's coming through the chatter feeds and also communicate through that and be able to move things through the process much more faster. And how are they connecting smarter? So again, thinking of it, from a personalization perspective. So allowing uh, customers connect up to the communities and enable them to look at content, 
follow the groups that they're interested in, automatically creating um, you know, the home pages that really are specific to those particular customers uh, as you look at your different customer segments, and then also seeing content that's most important to them where that's gonna bubble up to the top when they first log in, but ultimately being able to personalize that experience uh, per user. The other thing that the community cloud is doing today is, is strengthening the connections and allowing folks to have more open conversations about things which enable people to uh, generate really good conversation about your products or services. Um, also allows folks to collaborate more uh, from a uh, product productivity perspective and also being able to allow people to, to share different information via profile. So you do have the ability within the community cloud to provide different security to different users, different user groups, but that allows you to actually connect and build new relationships as well. And from a social perspective, so social intelligence that pushes relevant information to users, uh, ultimately being able to go into the community and automatically generate topics that are for that particular discussion or really be able to communicate with an expert on that particular subject, things that are more relevant to actual uh, users will make it more efficient and more effective for folks to use your community cloud. And another uh, capability of community uh, where you look at adoption and how people are, are you know, you leveraging the technology to you know, make their um, experience with you much better. Uh, you have the ability to rank these users. Uh, you have the ability to create leaderboards and, and provide badges for folks that, you know, uh, provides them some incentive to, to use the community much better, more effectively. Uh, and these folks are recognized in that community as well. And how do they connect faster? So with Salesforce's lightning bolt, build it once, then distribute it and reuse it. The lightning bolt technology allows you out of the box to look at templates that you can clone, customize, and have the ability to brand those templates, have the ability to really cut down all of your development costs in terms of how long it takes you to put up uh, you know, a traditional portal. Um, and again, we're looking at that rich capability out of the box with the Salesforce One platform. So we're really exposing that technology and exposing those functions and capabilities uh, out to your customers, partners, uh, and your employees. Uh, I wanna take a pause here and actually just show you how, how easy it is to customize uh, a community. And this is just a really simple example um, as we look at it. So I'm gonna log in to Salesforce um, and I'm in, <clears throat> so typically logging into Salesforce, you get to a home page. Let me take you guys down into the uh, configuration of it. This is one of our sandboxes, but ultimately I'm going to go into setup and I'm going to go down into ability to customize here. We have a few communities right now set up, so we'll look at one. And when you get in here, you had it ability to manage the community, which is the, the profile security and adding folks to, um, you know, to the community, uh, or you have the builder. We're going to look at the builder here. We're looking at that lightning bolt builder, uh, and it takes you into um, really a template that we generated right from the Salesforce platform uh, from the community builder. And there's a couple things you can do in here. Um, <clears throat> The first thing I'll show you all is, is really looking at the components. So you had the ability to, to drag and drop components onto you know, a given uh, page layout. Uh, you also had the opportunity to brand things, just like your typical CMS. And you also can move things around in a page structure. And then there's some general settings uh, for how you'd like the community to interact. So I'm gonna do a, something really simple here, and um, we've exposed a couple of dashboards here from a security perspective. So we're gonna drag and drop um, the dashboard here <clears throat> and just show you how easy this is to customize. So this dashboard is set up. I now have the ability to modify kind of what this says here. And let's do, let's change this to, let's call this customer. 
dashboard not set up we'll also do that's right above there we'll also do something here on the branding side where we'll go in and we're going to add a company logo <clears throat> so we do have an asset library here so we'll add a logo in here and we'll add some background so we add a header and you can upload and the content and right change the fonts typical cms and we'll do a quick background see what that looks like but as you can see um you know quickly customizing this community for a specific person person uh purpose i'm sorry and you can have multiple communities uh, so ultimately, you know, let's call this uh, welcome to the community. Let's say we if you take a look at this, <clears throat> you could drag and drop, make any changes you want and you could have multiple areas so we could add you know you have the home page but you also had the ability to look at your navigation bar and add additional menus so anything that you have in your salesforce or depending on the different community you've purchased you could actually expose different things uh based on security out to the community and then you could also you know as you're developing this and putting this together you can go ahead and preview it from a desktop perspective, mobile, so what does this look like on a mobile device? And how would my partners or customers interact with that? Okay. And again, from a tablet or desktop perspective. So you had the ability to very rich customization here um within salesforce but just wanted to show you all just how simple uh and straightforward it is to really customize this um type of uh technology here and we're going to go back to the uh powerpoint here <clears throat> okay so real simple um as you've seen but the lightning bolt technology makes that much more easy to customize and, and set up um <clears throat> From a, a, a pre-built template perspective, so what you guys just witnessed was we had a pre-built template in there, and um, I cloned it earlier. So all I had to do was go in and, and make some modifications to it. Uh, but this is really um, the ability leveraging, you know, from a, a mobile-first design perspective. Those templates are accessible from any device. So if your Androids um, and your your iPhones, we could actually see what that would look like, you know, on those types of devices. Uh, from a branding perspective, as you've seen, I was able to quickly modify the, the branding uh, and make some changes uh, right there within that page. You also had the ability to leverage Visual, Visual Force. For those of you who know Salesforce and, and know what Visual Force is, you do have the ability to customize the community and leverage Visual Force as well. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that is very important is the masking of the uh, you know, site uh, name. So instead of having it go to force.com or Salesforce, you could actually mask it so that the site is branded to your specific name and, and your needs. And again, being able to access the community from anywhere. So your tablet, uh, your desktop, your mobile device, uh, they have a very rich mobile SDK um, and templates are fully device responsive as well. And again, just really want to touch on um, the empowerment of the community ma manager, which is very uh, important as you look at adopting uh, the new technology. You have the ability as a community manager to really analyze, um, you know, how people are using the tool. Um, you're able to go out and, and, and really generate different discussion groups and things that allow people to actually have some incentive to, to log into the community. Um, you'll be able to create topics pretty easily. Um, without needing to, you know, request something from IT, 
um, all of this technology that we're um, actually showing you today is point and click. So more of a declarative um, versus development. So ultimately, this is uh, how things are done much more faster uh, in this type of uh, environment versus your uh, traditional technology. Um, <clears throat> so to summarize, you have your channel sales uh, from a, a, a partner perspective. So from a partner portal, uh, imagine your partners today being able to register their deals, uh, you um, being able to distribute leads and, and assign those leads based on which partners are going to really accelerate the best at that, um, being able to onboard partners if there's particular uh, documents or uh, files that they need to complete in order to work with you, all of that can be um, presented in a community and accessed through the community. And then your traditional uh, customer self-service. So allowing your customers to uh, access the community for ask questions, uh, get answers, uh, find knowledge documentation to be able to resolve their own issues. So this actually helps increase, uh, as we mentioned, some of the numbers in, in the 40% range, uh, customer resolution on issues, right? And customer escalations, but um, also being able to allow them to share ideas and, you know, for your products and services, um, you could, you could hone in on that. People can vote on those ideas and then you could actually implement that in your product or service. And for your employees, so, uh, being able to connect thoroughly, uh, through a branded, uh, mobile experience and also, um, you know, leveraging the, uh, ability for chatter and for the employees to communicate much more effectively in real time. Um, you also had the ability in the employee community to share uh, files uh, through a number of different uh, options, but you know, you, there's SharePoint integration. There's also integration that we could set up with uh, AWS um, and things of that nature, but ultimately being able to have your employees access this community as well um, is, is definitely a benefit to you. And as I was mentioning before, there's a, <clears throat> definitely a extension for the app exchange so any product that you see out there on the app exchange which now has over 2500 products um, and have over 2 million downloads almost 3 million downloads this you could actually integrate with any products from the app exchange expose those in the community as well um, and have people you know again give them particular access to that uh, capability or functionality out in those communities. So whether you're looking to accelerate sales through a partner channel and drive business, um, or you're looking to connect your customers with community cloud and really enhance their experience working with you, uh, or you're looking to transform the workplace and allow employees to connect uh, to to real experts um, to folks that are available to support, you know, questions and um, collaborate on files, uh, the community cloud is definitely uh, an opportunity for you to look into this capability and technology. Um, <clears throat> we as a partner, uh, for those of you who are new to Salesforce, um, we do have a community cloud quick start where we would come in and provide, you know, the design, the layout. We would also consult you on the type of licenses that you need and the type for community that you need um, and, and then basically set up those capabilities based on your requirements uh, so we're available to, to support any questions that you have but ultimately we do have a process that we uh, could leverage to have you set up from a, a very quick perspective typically a, a quick start is anywhere from two to four weeks uh, to get things moving depending on the complexity uh, and then for those who are existing Salesforce customers we do so have something called a health check where we could come in and, and pretty much for those of you who may, might be on the old portal or older technology, we had the ability to come in and, and take a look at that, analyze that, provide you some recommendations and a roadmap uh, on the new technology and capabilities and show you how you could generate, you know, definitely ROI from setting up either one of these types of communities. And with that said, I want to turn it back over to Andrea for any questions.
Awesome. Thanks, Jody. Um, just as a quick reminder, if you do have questions, please go ahead and type those into your GoToMeeting um, chat panel. Um, Jody, our first question, so you gave us a, a quick demo of how a community can be edited using the Lightning Bolt editor. Um, can you talk a little bit more about what's the technical ability needed to manage and administer a community? Oh, great. Yeah, great question. So um, typically a business analyst. So if, if you're, if you can use, um, th there's definitely training on trailhead from Salesforce, by the way, but if you have, uh, in your past life, um, you know, leveraged or used the CRM, uh, from a point and click perspective, if you know how to, um, go in a system and actually, um, from a business analyst perspective, um, you know, maybe set up reports and dashboards, um, my recommendation for anyone getting into you know this uh technology and looking to actually implement a community on their own will be start with the trailhead uh from salesforce uh, if you go to uh, salesforce.com trailhead you'll find a lot of training uh, material and that would at least get you started to see you know how familiar you are with the technology but it doesn't require uh development skills to actually uh set set up a community um if you want to use the out of the box templates if you want to go beyond that that's where you'll need someone who who knows and understands visual force uh also website development folks who you know understand css and and cms um types of um you know functionality awesome um so in the presentation you talked about engaging three different types of audiences engaging customers engaging partners and engaging employees um, if an organization is looking at this and saying, okay, yes, I want to do all three, what do you what do you typically recommend for a rollout? Is it an all at once thing or a phased approach or any any best practices around that? Absolutely. Great, great question again. Um, so we typically recommend a phased approach uh, for certain uh, and it, it really depends on the organization. Um, it, it depends on where you are and, and, and where your needs are. Uh, in general, if, if we start working with a customer who doesn't have any type of community or, or portal set up today, we're probably going to recommend they're going to get the most ROI, um, you know, out of the gate uh, with the customer community potentially. But if, uh, you know, that customer has uh, more, more partners, um, we probably recommend more of a partner uh, community depending on, you know, how those partners are communicating with them today. It could be, uh, you know, manual could be via email and we could see a lot of value in, in in automating that and putting that in a community um if we if we go that route but it definitely would be a phased approach um you know initially and we also recommend uh if you before you rolled out a community a pilot so picking a, a set of users um from your customer uh you know constituents and saying hey let's we're, we're doing a community and would like your feedback and, and really do a pilot. You know, if you're a co company with thousands of customers, maybe that pilot group is a hundred. If you're, if you're a company of, uh, you know, who only have a hundred or so customers, maybe that pilot group is about 10, but we definitely would, 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 um, you know, recommend that you start off with a pilot and start off with a phased approach. We have another question about metrics. Um, so if an organization rolls out a community, what are some of the, the data points or metrics that can be gathered to indicate how well the community is, is functioning? Great question. Uh, yeah, so from a customer community perspective, uh, they're going to be looking at uh, re case resolution um, on, you know, issues and, and, and you know, Challenges that come up with customers. They're all also going to be looking for customer satisfaction. So, you know, uh, definitely those are two two main metrics on a, a customer community. Uh, from a partner community perspective, they're looking at more productivity and more acceleration on the close cycles. Uh, so those are those are two areas where, um, you know, with the partner community, it's about training them and providing them with the right uh, data and information. So we do a, a metric to compare, hey, how did you have access to this data and information before? Was it in real time? You know, how stale was it, et cetera? And you compare that with um, them accessing that information and, and the data on Salesforce uh, from an employee community perspective. The metrics that, you know, we generally look at is, is employee satisfaction uh, as well as employee productivity. 
Uh, so those are the pretty high level metrics. Uh, and we could share more information on that um, depending on the different use cases uh, for the different companies because it could change per company. But those are the baseline ones that we typically focus on. Gotcha. Um, with regards specifically to employee communities, um, we have a question um, from Barbara about um, how do you demonstrate to stakeholders the value of an employee community? Um, is there a way to benchmark internal resu results against some kind of industry benchmarks? Um, any any thoughts on that one? Yeah, so um, typically we do an analysis of your existing uh, environment. So let's say, um, you know, from a customer perspective, uh, the only ability they had in the past was to contact, you know, how, how do they know if their case is getting resolved or getting worked? Um, they, they had to contact the customer center, right? And, the, and we have metrics for that. Um, but basically from an ROI perspective, we would be looking at the community to say, the, this community allowed them to access their, their case and see what the details were. So it reduced the calls coming into the, the call center, right? Uh, and now that customer service uh, rep is able to focus on either more difficult um, challenges or uh, focus on more, taking on more calls and resolving more issues. Uh, so it depends on organization, but we would take a look at what the current landscape is, what the current technology is, and, and also, hey, is it taking, you know, folks, you know, two or three days to get things resolved because they don't have knowledge articles and information readily to support um, as these calls come in, right? Uh, are customer service folks trained and ready to you know, take those calls? Um, in a lot of cases, um, you, you have some really senior folks, um, you know, customer service reps, and then you have folks that you know, are just starting, right, and getting trained. Do we have the right material that, that, that you know, is generated once they say, hey, here's the type of case um, that, that pops up. So those are things that we typically need to, to analyze a bit, but to really, you know, put this back on the business is more around what are the current um, challenges? Um, how, how long is it taking people to resolve cases? Um, and then looking at the metrics and, and again, on a, a set number of time as well. So we typically look at a 90 day window to say, um, let's let's evaluate this over that 90 days and see, you know, if we were able to reach those metrics that we uh, all came up with. Awesome. And Great question. To your point about kind of um, comparing current state to how things are after a technology rollout, another thing that, that we've seen customers do is some type of employee survey. So either using like a net promoter score framework or survey questions related to onboarding time, employee benefits communication, whatever some of the things you're trying to roll out in the portal to kind of do a before and after look at how things, how things have gone. Um, we have another question about um, if the recording will be sent out. Um, and yes, the recording and the slides will be sent out to all attendees. Um, Jody, we have one other question about the differences between community cloud and the old portal functionality. Um, mm -hmm. The same thing with a, a rebranded look or what's really changed? No, it, yeah, it, I mean, it's a totally different product at this point, different technology. Um, there's all, also different license types that are used. Um, so it's a, it's a total migration from the old portal um, over to the new one. Uh, the similarities is the fact that the security model, it, it definitely has been advanced, but that's pretty, pretty similar. But from a U, UI perspective, it, it's different from how you build the community, uh, as you've seen with the lightning boat, uh, is totally different. So if you do have an existing uh, community, uh, I'm sorry, portal, uh, not community, but if you do have an existing portal and you're looking to migrate over, um, there's several things that, you know, we would look at and take you know, steps on to, to migrate you over, but it, it, it's definitely a, a whole nother product um, outside of the old portal um, that's, that's no longer actually supported by Salesforce. Awesome. Well, that is the last question that we have. 
Um, so again, we'll be sending out slides and recording shortly. Um, Jody, if you could flip back to the contact information really quick. You got it. Um, please feel free, feel, free, feel free to reach out with any follow-up questions. Um, if you'd like to learn more about our health check um, or about uh, our quick start process, um, we'd be happy to talk through that with you. Um, so other than that, um, thank you everybody for joining us. And Jody, thank you for, um, for walking us through this great content. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you all. Really appreciate the support and time.